You said Malcolm X died broke. Broke from whose perspective? Let's stay with that for a minute. The brother said El Hodge Malik El Shabazz died broke. According to whose definition, my brother? You still trapped into that European matrix of materialism. You still trapped in that European matrix of materialism. You said Malcolm X died broke. According to who? According to who? What definition are you using to say Malcolm died broke? No harm, my brother, no harm. I'm just giving out my lesson. Malcolm died rich. Let me break this down for you one time. All my materialistic Africans, let me break this down. Malcolm X died a spiritually rich man. I'm going to tell you why. Y'all ready for this? Rest in peace to Pan-Africanist El Hajj Malik El Shabazz. Rest in peace to Pan-Africanist El Hajj Malik El Shabazz. Rest in peace to Pan-Africanist ancestor El Hajj Malik El Shabazz. Let me tell you why Malcolm died spiritually rich. Now you're judging Malcolm by European standards of success and money. You're judging the great ancestor by European standards of materialism and money. As a black man, you should not be using European standards, but here we go. Here we go. Malcolm died rich, number one. He overcame his fear of death. Do you know how hard it is to overcome your fear of death? Do you know how hard it is to overcome the fear of your enemy? Malcolm X overcame the fear of death. He died rich. Number one. Number two, Malcolm was selfless. Do you know when El Hajj was in Ghana with Queen Mother Ancestor Maya Angelou and the wife of Dr. W.E.B. Du Bois? Malcolm could have stayed in Ghana. Kwame Nkrumah would have gave Malcolm a job in the government, just like Maya Angelou had a job. Dr. Du Bois' wife had a job. Other Africans who came over had a job. Malcolm could have stayed. They asked Malcolm to stay and send for Betty and the girls. They asked for Malcolm to stay and send for Betty and the girls. They asked for Malcolm to stay and send for Betty. Malcolm said, I cannot. If it costs me my life, I got to return and finish the work. Same thing Frederick Douglass said 100 years before him. Same thing Frederick Douglass said 100 years before him. Malcolm was selfless. What more can you give to your people than your very life? Malcolm died spiritually rich. Yes, he was Muslim and that was fine. But he embraced his African culture. A lot of you Muslims will never embrace your African culture. A lot of you Christians will never embrace your African culture. Malcolm embraced his African culture. Malcolm died spiritually rich. The ways of God are not the ways of man and the ways of man are not the ways of God, brothers and sisters. The ways of God are not the ways of man and the ways of man are not the ways of God. You say, Dr. Umar, how can you talk it and you're not married? You know why? I got to take my time because I know how I'm going to love my wife. I know how special I'm going to treat my wives. So I got to make sure that when I lock in, I'm locking in with women for the right reasons who are deserving of the throne. Because I am amongst the chosen. I got to take my time because I am amongst the chosen. Your wife can elevate 
or she can denigrate. Your husband can elevate you, black woman, or he can denigrate you. In order to walk the divine path, In order to walk the divine path. In order to walk the divine path, you must operate in a spirit of abundance. Ibase Oshun. The principle of Oshun. You must be in the enlightenment of abundance. Abundance means the universe operates on unlimited supply. Abundance means the universe operates on unlimited supply. Abundance means that you believe in your very soul that all that you need is not only available, it will be provided at the time you need it. A selfish person doesn't operate in the spirit of abundance. We lack nothing but faith. Let me say it again. We lack nothing. The universe has everything we need, but the key to unlock it is not being a Muslim, although there's nothing wrong with being a Muslim. The key to unlocking it is not being a Christian, although there's nothing wrong with being a Christian. The key to unlocking it is not being a Hebrew, although there's nothing wrong with being a Hebrew. The way you unlock the treasure chest of universal abundance is with your faith. faith. What are black people lacking today? Faith. We have money. We have college degrees. We got billionaires. We got millionaires. We have intelligent children. I believe the smartest children in the world, which has even been proven, so I don't have to believe it. We have it all. We have divine DNA. Black people got everything we need except faith. And here's the biggest contradiction of the American Negro. The biggest contradiction of the American Negro. The biggest contradiction, not faith in a higher power, faith in the higher power. There's only one supreme consciousness. Not faith in a higher power, faith in the higher power. Not faith in a higher power, faith in the higher power, which is beyond any name you want to assign it. Supreme consciousness is beyond any name you choose. So stop fighting over names because none of them are sufficient. None of them. None of them. My small mind can never comprehend the greatness of the divine mind. My limited small mind, this brain matter cannot comprehend divine mind. I can only begin to understand and relate, but comprehend? No way. Somebody say, can you comprehend God? If a Negro tells you they can comprehend God, that Negro lost his mind. We cannot comprehend God. We can't. We can't. Can we relate to God? Can we believe in God? Can we pray to God? Can we have faith in God? Can we try to understand some of God? Yes. But to comprehend, to understand completely the great, undefinable, incomprehensible reality, essence, and origin of all things, we can't do that. Brothers and sisters, this is King Kong Consciousness. See, this is what I want black people to know. We fighting demons. I want black people to know we are fighting demons. There are demons all around this world and their job is to do what? Distract you from your divine mission. Some of those demons have inhabited human bodies. We got demons all around. I'm serious about this now. We live in a world of spirits. You know what? I think I got to talk about spirit one time. We got to talk about spirit. One. I'm going to come right back and talk about spirit one time. Let me. Y'all want me to talk about spirit one time? This is Pastor R.B. Jesus. 
I'm the number one pastor in the black community. I, I preach Pan-Africanism and loyalty to God. African people are the chosen race. We are the chosen people. Being chosen has nothing to do with being a Hebrew. Being chosen has nothing to do with being a Christian. Being chosen has nothing to do with being a Muslim. That's all propaganda to bring you into those religious orders so you can be mentally exploited and financially exploited. Spiritual liberation does not confine you to a set pattern of dogma. Spiritual liberation does not require religious dogma. Let me say it again. Spiritual liberation does not require dogma. There's no such thing as spiritual liberation through a religion. The religion may be the foundation. The religion may get you started. The religion may help you. Spiritual liberation is between you and God. It has nothing to do with the Messiah, a Christ, a prophet, an apostle, or a doctrine. Spiritual liberation is between you and God by way of your ancestors. This is going to be too heavy for some of y'all. You might got to hop off the live. This is going to be too. Okay, Kenny, the rock star. Religions were created. To distract you from your spiritual liberation. Oh, I know that hurt you. I know that hurt you. Religions were created to take you off the path of your spiritual destiny. I know that hurt. Religion is a distraction from spiritual destination. I don't care how many religious beliefs you got. I don't care how many prophets and messiahs and apostles you got. I don't care how many religious ceremonies you go to. I don't care how many holidays you observe. I don't care how many religious uh, uh, services you go to. You will not advance spiritually until you get your ass in a room by yourself with God and close your eyes while you wild awake. I'm going to say it again. I'm going to say it again. This is Pastor R.B. Jesus. This is Pastor R.B. Jesus. Religion is irrelevant for spiritual development. Let me say it again. Religion is irrelevant for spiritual development. Let me say it again. Religion is irrelevant for spiritual development. They just found a pastor having sex with another man in his church. They just found a black pastor having sex with another man in his church. They found a black pastor having sex with one of the wives of the men in his church. If this is the house of God, how can the devil operate? If this is the house of God, how can the devil operate? No religion can be authentic that doesn't prioritize the needs of God's chosen people. No religion can be authentic if it doesn't prioritize the needs of God's chosen people. African people are God's chosen people. If your religion does not prioritize the needs of God's chosen people, your religion is not from God. If your religion ain't taking care of black people, your religion is not from God. African people are suffering not just because of white supremacy. African people are suffering not just because of white supremacy. African people are suffering because we have adopted the materialistic conspicuous consumption culture of European Neanderthals. You have given up your divine culture for Neanderthals. You worship money. You don't worship God. Please stop lying. 
The black church is the most materialistic place in the world on Sunday. The black church is the most materialistic place in the world on Sunday. The black church is the most materialistic place in the world on Sunday. My brother, don't come on here with that type of profanity. I got to block you. When I'm doing my, R I'm in RB Jesus right now. I'm in my RB Jesus. I'm in past the RB Jesus mode. I know people who've been in religions all their life, never meditated a day in their life. I know people who've been in religions all their life, never meditated a day in their life. How in the hell have you gotten closer to God and you never been alone with God? You only deal with God when you're around a whole bunch of other people. That is not spiritual development. Oh, stop it. Spiritual development is a one-on-one -on -one thing between you and the creator. Yes, there is a necess necessity for the community. The community can raise your vibration. The community can reinforce what you do. But at the end of the day, your destiny is a contract between you and God. Your destiny is a confidential contract between you and God. Your destiny is a confidential contract between you and God. And if your destiny is a confidential contract between you and God, it don't matter how many pastors and imams and rabbis you go before. They don't know your destiny. Only God knows your destiny. And you have to recover, recover your destiny. And you have to fulfill your destiny. Stop letting people make you think they are the way to salvation. Nobody walking the earth has your salvation. Your salvation is within you. You have to find it and fulfill it. People can aid you in finding your salvation, but they are not the salvation. Christianity can help you find your salvation, but Christianity is not the salvation. Hebrewism can help you find your salvation, but Hebrewism is not the salvation. The Muslims can help you find your salvation, but Islam is not the salvation. Your salvation lies in the fulfillment of your destiny that you chose with God. You got to go in here, not to the church out there. You got to go in here, not to the masjid out there. You have to go in here, not to the temple out there. You're scared to look at your inner self. That's why your entire religious world is based on what happens outside of yourself. You're scared to look at your inner self. So your entire religious world is based on looking outside yourself. The pastor don't want to look at himself. The rabbi don't want to look at himself. The imam don't want to look at themselves. You got to be willing to look at yourself. You got to look at all your faults, all your mistakes. You must confess your sins before your ancestors. You must confess your sins before your ancestors. You can call on all these religious strangers and never call on your ancestors. That's insane. You're taught to worship all these religious personalities whose existence you can't even prove, but you can't even call on your ancestors. Oh my goodness. You are God. masculine representation of supreme consciousness or you are feminine representation of supreme consciousness you are either masculine representation of supreme consciousness or you are feminine representation of supreme linda the empress how you doing queen this is why in african culture you got to get married to be fulfilled because you are only half of divine consciousness you need your queen to fulfill make the cycle complete that's the 360 degrees of marriage only through that commitment you got to commit yourself when you commit yourself to your wife you're committing yourself to the feminine divine when your wife commits herself to you she's committing herself to the masculine divine the yin and the yang, the up and the down, the positive and the negative, the sun and the moon, the earth and the water. Only through commitment of that other power can you become one. The two of you become one. And now you are complete on earth. And now you can go forward with the fulfillment of your destiny.
but you must choose your mate based on destiny. Women will choose their mate based on security. Men will choose their mate based on that juicy ass. Or yellow skin. Men will choose their women for how they look. Women will choose their men for their outlook. Men choose their women for how they physically look. Women choose their men for the financial outlook. Men choose their women for how they physically look. Women choose their men based on their financial outlook. I'm not going to deal with how the Pope don't have a wife because you're talking about European Christianity. European Christianity, Eve made Adam bite the apple. They call it original sin. Africans, we don't believe in original sin. We believe in original divinity. Africans don't believe in original sin. We believe in original divinity. Africans don't believe in original sin. And we believe in original divinity sunshine lady i've never been married sunshine lady you want to know i've never been married i will be one day but not yet and i'm going to take my time already got one queen just waiting for the other one rb jesus god doesn't choose your husband or wife for you that is not correct if God chose your husband and wife, there would have been no divorce in the black community. Let's not lie on God. Let's not lie on God. God did not choose your husband for you. God did not choose your wife for you. Your ego chose your husband and your ego chose your wife. Your unmet needs chose your husband and your unmet needs chose your wife. Your child abuse chose your husband and your child abuse chose your wife. Your trauma chose your husband and your trauma chose your wife. Don't lie on God. God did not choose your partner. Stop it. God did not choose your partner. Stop it. God did not choose your partner. Stop it. Now, if you have advanced spiritually to the point where you are in alignment with your personal destiny, your mission on earth, which means you are in alignment with your higher self, then you are in alignment with God. So when you put yourself in alignment, you can make the right choice because you are in one with God. But God do not make choices for you. Stop. Stop, stop, stop. God does not make choices for you. But you can make divine choices once you put yourself in alignment. You can make divine choices for yourself once you put yourself in alignment. So God didn't choose nobody for you. You chose them. But your choice could have been a divine choice if you were in alignment at the time you made the decision. Iba shea gungu. Iba shea gungu. We have free will. You make the decisions. You make the decisions. Jesus died for your sins. I respect your belief, but I see black men dying every day for the sins of black people. So I don't know how Jesus was the only person who died for my sins. Dr. Martin Luther King died for my sins. Emmett Till died for my sins. Malcolm X died for my sins. Patrice Lumumba died for my sins. Deedon Kamafi died for my sins. Amical Cabral died for my sins. So I don't know how one person 2,000 years ago died for my sins when I still see black messiahs dying for the sins of the black world every day. But you're not ready to understand, understand, and understand this because your mind is filled with dogma. You're not ready to overstand, understand, and understand because your mind is filled with dogma. There is no spiritual liberation through narrow-minded religion. Let me say it again. There is no spiritual liberation through narrow-minded religion. Let me say it one more time. There is no spiritual liberation through narrow-minded religion. I'm on the path just like y'all trying to work it out. I'm trying to overcome my lower self just like the rest of you all. I'm still addicted to Philly cheesesteaks. 
I'm still addicted to Max's cheesesteaks at Germantown and Erie at Broad Street, North. I'm still addicted to Max's. I want my Max's cheesesteak with the cheese, the extra mayo, put some fried onions and some sweet peppers. I'm still working on my spiritual path, but that don't mean I can't try to pull you on up as I go. Is your partner on the spiritual path is one quick way to know if your partner is on the spiritual path. After sex, do you feel drained or do you feel refreshed? After sex, do you feel drained or do you feel refreshed? After you make back magic with your partner, do you feel drained or do you feel refreshed? Did positive energy gives if you are feeling drained after sex, you're dating a spiritual vampire. If you feel drained after sex, you are dating a spiritual vampire. If you feel drained after sex, you are dating a spiritual vampire. If you suffer from any, suffer from any addiction, if you suffer from any addiction, you have not yet achieved God consciousness. I already told you I'm still addicted to ginger ale, zebra cakes of, of my addiction to Philly cheesesteaks, little Debris zebra cakes and ginger ale soda. I'm not I haven't reached God consciousness yet. I'm being honest with you. If you believe there's spiritual liberation through Jesus Christ for you, no problem. I will never interfere with your personal belief systems because you could have possibly come into this world to be confused in this lifetime so you can work out your confusion in your next lifetime. This is not your only life on this planet. You're coming back. This is not your only incarnation. You've been here before and you're coming back. Everybody's coming back because you're not going to complete it in one incarnation. 80 years is not enough time. Most of us don't even begin to spiritually evolve until we in our 40s. Most of us don't even get serious about spirituality until we in our 40s. Some of us in our 30s, if you're lucky, in your 20s. So if you're only living to be 90 years old, 100 years old, and you didn't get serious until you were 40, you only had 60 years on the spiritual path, you will be coming back to incarnate. Write down all of your coincidences, write down all your dreams, write down all your coincidences, write down all your dreams, write down all your coincidences, meaningful coincidences, write down all of your dreams. Let me give you a coincidence I had. Y'all ready? I'm going to give you two meaningful coincidences I had just to give you an example. You have them as well. I was in Cameroon. As you all know, I was in Cameroon two, three weeks ago. Central Africa, Central West Africa. Shout out to my Cameroonian Africans, my Lembe Africans, my Bimbia Africans, my Daula Africans, Duala Africans. I was at the Bimbia Slave Fort in Cameroon two, three weeks ago. At the Bimbia Slave Fort, we came across the auction block where our ancestors were forced to stand up and get inspected by Caucasians. On the auction block, I, I thought I saw a praying mantis. I yelled out, is that a praying mantis? Is that a praying mantis? Is that a praying mantis? Yes, Joel Embiid is a Cameroonian, but he has been snow bunny. It wasn't a praying mantis. It was a small green grasshopper, a small green grasshopper, a small green grasshopper. When I got back home to Philadelphia and I went to open up the door, I'm just getting home from Africa. 10 hour flight from Cameroon to Washington, D.C. Or should I say Lome, Togo, because I went from Cameroon to Togo to Washington, D.C. And thank you to the beautiful sisters, my beautiful Ethiopian sisters on Ethiopian Airlines. Thank you to my beautiful sisters on Ethiopian Airlines who took the best care of King Kong consciousness in the first class suite. Oh, that Ethiopian food. Lord, have mercy. Oh, that Ethiopian food. Oh, my goodness. And my fine Ethiopian steward. They took care of me. They took care of King Kong. Anyway, 10-hour flight from Lome, Togo, back to Washington, D.C. 
When I get back to Philadelphia, guess what's next to the bell? The doorbell on the house. Guess what was next to the doorbell on the house? A praying mantis from Cameroon. Cameroon has its own species of praying mantis. The Cameroon in Central West Africa has its own species of praying mantis. I mentioned praying mantis at there's a Cameroonian praying mantis right next to the doorbell on the house. Do y'all see that coincidence? Did y'all see that coincidence? So the meaning I took from that was my ancestors returned with me from the Bimbia slave fort to help me fight for Pan-African liberation. The praying mantis was a message from my ancestors. We heard you. We heard you and we are with you. That was the message. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Spiritual coincidences. You better write your dreams down. You better write your dreams down. I had another dream of a female that I've known for some time. And in this dream of this female that I've known for some time who I thought I could trust, the ancestors told me I could not trust them. They did not speak in words. They spoke in symbols. It blew my mind. A woman I thought I could trust, the ancestors told me in the dream, be careful with her. You cannot trust her. Guess what, black man? I'm talking to the bunny hoppers. Black men and black women, no disrespect to the Neanderthal nation. No disrespect to the Neanderthal nation. No disrespect to the Neanderthal nation, but one of the quickest ways to keep your third eye from ever opening up is copulating with your eternal enemies. I'm going to say it again. Keep on bunny hopping. Your third eye will never open. Keep on sleeping with the enemy and your third eye will be calcified shut for the rest of your life. Keep on giving your ancestral DNA to the people who have robbed and raped and killed and stolen everything from Africa and African people and your third eye will never open. Keep it up keep it up i'm not condemning white women they're just not for our people that's all i'm not condemning white women they're just not for our people that's all and for you negroes to be so in touch with the abrahamic path for you Negroes to be so in touch with Abraham and Jesus and Muhammad if you read the damn bible it is very clear that the children of Israel were not supposed to intermix with nobody else. So why do I see you Negroes? Somebody going to have to help me understand. Most black people belong to an Abrahamic religion. Hebrew, Christian, Muslim. Most black people belong to an Abrahamic religion. Hebrew, Christian, Muslim. Most black people belong to an Abrahamic religion. Hebrew, Christian, Muslim. So if you belong to an Abrahamic religion, if you read the damn Bible, it clearly tells you that the chosen people are not supposed to mix their seed. Am I right or am I wrong? Am I right or am I? Does the Bible not tell you that the chosen people are not supposed to mix their seed? Now, we're going to disagree on who's the chosen people, because I believe all African people are the chosen people, not just those who follow a certain religion. It's in your DNA. Your birthright is in your DNA. You being the man and women of God, that's in your DNA. It ain't got nothing to do with no books, no Bibles, no religion. It's in your DNA. But the point that I'm making is your ancestors, your own religion that you believe in says you ain't supposed to mix your seed. But you out here with white women and everybody else. Make it make sense. Make it make sense. Make it make sense. No, IQ collections. Let me help you understand and overstand. IQ collections. Let me help you understand and overstand. African people are the chosen people. But you must remember, many are called. Few will be chosen of the chosen. Do you understand me? IQ collections. African people are the chosen people. But not all of us will stand up and manifest God consciousness. Do you understand? 
Many are called. All African people are called to God consciousness. African people are the chosen people, all of us, but many of us will never do the work to achieve God consciousness. Many are called, few are chosen, and the chosen ones will be the ones who did the spiritual work to achieve God consciousness. Reparations. I support reparations. Pan-Africanism gave birth to the reparations movement. But guess what? Can we talk about spiritual reparations? Can we talk about spiritual reparations? Because the white man can't give you spiritual reparations. You have to give that to yourself. Can we talk about spiritual reparations? Can we talk about what we owe to our ancestors for disobeying their rules? Can we talk about what we owe our ancestors for disobeying their rules? What about spiritual reparations? Oh, we don't want to talk about that. We just want some money so we can go buy some jeans and some jewelry. You just want some money so you can go buy some hair and some nails. You don't want reparations. You want money. Because you ninjas are in love with white culture and you think God is going to help you overthrow white people so you can take their place. Oh, Lord have mercy. We must be sleeping. We must. You think God is going to overthrow white people and put their black imposters in their position. Why would God remove the current oppressor? So his imitators can take his place. Why? Why would God do that? We're not going back to where we belong until we start practicing righteousness. Collective racial righteousness. Black kids killing each other on the street. Black men ain't doing nothing about it. You're not getting no help from the divine. Black girls out here prostituting themselves, dressing like whores, black women co-signing it because they dressing like whores. You're not getting no help from the divine. Black elders being abused in old folks home, black elders living on the street. God is going to come and help you because you went to a mega church to pray on Sunday to a white Jesus. I don't think so. I don't think so. It don't work that way, family. It don't work that way, family. And if you know anything about the Lord and Muslims, Christians, and Hebrews, you should know God punishes groups as much as he punishes individuals. God punishes groups as much as he punishes individuals. Black America has been cursed. We are under a curse. And we will remain under that curse until we overthrow European materialism. We worship money and expensive European objects. That's what we do. And guess what? Go into the church. It don't stop. Go into the temple. It don't stop. Go into the masjid. It don't stop. We are under a curse. Look at us. You can't tell. Open your eyes. Black women want to look like white women and black men want to marry white women. Look at yourselves. Your children being miseducated and you won't do anything about it. Look at yourselves. You ain't got no banks that you own. You ain't got no hospitals that you own. You got very few real independent schools that you own. Where's your jobs for your people? Where's your security for your people? Where's your elder programs? God ain't blessing you. We ain't blessed. You really that narcissistic? Are you that illusory? Are you under that much of an illusion? Are you under that much of an illusion that you think we are being blessed, imitating white people and neglecting our own black people? And you think that's the grounds for blessing because you go to church on Sunday with your tight ass skirt on. You walk into church so every married man can look at your ass. You committed sin on your way to worship Jesus. Lord have mercy. Stop playing. You go to the masjid that the Arabs control. 
You give the Arabs your money to take care of the mosque, but you ain't gave the black community a dollar to do nothing for itself. And you think God is blessing you for that. Oh, Lord, can we stop it? Can we please stop it? Can we please stop it? Pagan is a white man's world. I don't define nobody by white man terminology. As long as black children, black elders, and black mothers are not being taken care of, the black community will not be blessed by the most high. I don't care how much you pray, how much you study, how much you read. Selflessness is the road to divinity. What did Harriet Tubman give us? A selfless example. Sojourner, Sojourner Truth gave us a selfless example. Nat Turner gave us a selfless example. Gabriel Prosser, October 10th, he was hanged. He gave us a selfless example. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., yeah, he got some coochie on the side. That's between him, Coretta, and God. But largely, he gave us a selfless example. Mega Evers gave us a selfless example. Ida B. Wells gave us a... Fannie Lou Hamer gave us a selfless example. No selfish person will enter the kingdom. No selfish person will enter the kingdom. Now, let me ask you the when the last time you did something meaningful for another human being and didn't expect anything in return? When is the last thing you did something selfless for another human being and didn't ask for nothing in return? If you are selfish, you do not have God in your life. If you are selfish, you cannot possibly have God in your life. And I'm going to tell you why. I'm not claiming to be the most selfless person, but I'm a very selfless person. I am one of the givers of life. I'm not one of the takers. I am one of the givers. I'm not one of the takers. I've been helping people my whole life. It's the way my mother raised me. My mother is a giver. I'm a giver. Marcus Garvey was not a Mason. I don't know who lied to you, but he was not. I respect my Masons. Prince Hall was a Pan-Africanist, one of the fathers of reparations. He was a Mason. Major Dr. Martin Robinson Delaney was a Pan-Africanist, first uniform officer of black race in the Civil War. He was a Mason. I will not be joining the Masonic order. I will not be joining any secret society of any kind. I respect all of them. Don't bring up McDonald's because you're going to start me thinking about a strawberry shake and I'm one block away from McDonald's. Please don't mention McDonald's because you're going to have me thinking and dreaming on a strawberry shake. I'm trying to conquer my addictions. I'm trying to conquer my addictions. Will you please let me conquer my addictions? You have to pray and you have to meditate. I forgot. What was I just talking about? I lost my memory thinking about the strawberry shake. Somebody refresh my memory. I had an ADHD moment. Ancestral diversion for higher development. What was I just talking about, family? Can somebody type it in real quick? What was the last spiritual point I was talking about? What was my last? Okay. What was my last spiritual point? Y'all done took me off my square. Y'all took me off. What was my secret society? Okay. Before the secret societies. What was I talking about right before the secret societies? Okay. Faith is the key that unlocks the treasure chest of universal abundance. Black queens forever, snow bunnies never. Where are my natural headed sisters at? Shout out to all natural headed queens for the next 60 seconds. Where are all my natural headed queens? I need some hearts. If you got your own hair, if you are all natural queen, no fake eyelashes, no fake hair. Where you at? Where my natural queens at? Where my natural, where you at, ladies? Where you at, ladies? I got to shout out the natural queens. 
I have so much respect for black women who wear their own hair in this racist world. Big Papa Wifey, who are you? Can somebody tell me who's masquerading behind the Big Papa Wifey? All natural, I respect natural headed black women so much. They choose to be, you love your relaxer. Okay, it was no need for you to say that though, my sister. Don't get cute. You have a right to be a Negro pen, but you are on the Prince of Pan-Africanism's platform. Don't get cute. You have a right to be a Negro pen, but you are on the Prince of Pan-Africanism's platform. Don't get cute. I'm not putting you down. I'm simply elevating the natural queens. I'm not putting you down. I'm simply elevating the natural queens. I'm not putting you down. I'm simply elevating the natural queens. Y'all know my rule. If I can't grab it, I can't have it. If I can't grab it, I can't have it. Explain why I need more than one wife. I don't need to explain that. That's between me, my wives, and the most high and my ancestors. I don't need to explain that to you. I don't need to explain that to you. That's between me, the Ifa Tunde queendom, my ancestors, and the most high. Okay. Abundance, abundance, spiritual abundance. You got to have faith. Faith is hard. Faith is hard. Our faith is tested every day as African people. And let me say this. There is no faith in God without faith in your race. Let me say it again. There is no faith in God without faith in your race. Can I say it again? There is no faith in God without faith in your race. Let me say that one more time. There is no faith. Some of you Negroes will say, I believe in God, but I don't believe in black people impossible some of you ninjas will say hold on i'm about to put my cheesesteak order in at max's germantown and Erie. i'm about to put my cheesesteak order in at max's i told you i will debate your mans when he come up with 30 grand i'll debate anybody you want me to debate for thirty thousand dollars but nobody who's not on my level is getting a debate OK, they're not on my level. So if they want to debate 30 grand and you will get your debate and I want all my money up front. Cashier's check. Two weeks before the debate. Big Papa Wifey, you in North Philly. Y'all want me to call in my Philly's cheesesteak. This is King Kong consciousness. I want to call in an extra large, extra long. I want the giant cheesesteak. Extra mayonnaise on a roll. You know, I need extra mayonnaise on a roll. Please pit the bed out the roll. Pull the bread out the roll. I need all the extra bread. Cut the extra bread out the roll. Extra mayonnaise, extra fried peppers, extra fried onions, and extra mushrooms. All right. Give me some ketchup on there. A little bit of ketchup, some pepper. Philly cheesesteak, King Kong consciousness. I'll be up there in a minute. I'm sorry. Make that vegan mayo. The vegetarian mafia said, can I at least do vegan mayonnaise? So please substitute vegan mayonnaise. We can't substitute the cheese for vegan cheese because vegan cheese tastes and feel like snot. Vegan cheese... Vegan cheese taste and smell and feel like snot. So we're going to stay with regular American cheese, even though I don't like America. We're going to do American cheese, unless you got some Ethiopian cheese or some Ugandan cheese. We're going to do American cheese. Mushrooms, fried onions. I need some pickles and sweet peppers. Pickles, sweet peppers, fried onions, mushrooms, ketchup, pepper, extra mayo on the roll, pit the roll out, King Kong. And I need two ginger ales. Two ginger ales. Brothers and sisters. Brothers and sisters. Brothers and sisters, when is the last time you meditated? When is the last time you was quiet in a room with your phone off, no radio, no laptop, no iPad, no computer, no kids, no wife, just you? Sitting up straight so you don't fall asleep. Sit on the tip of the chair so you don't fall asleep. You cannot fall asleep. You become unconscious. The purpose of meditation is to increase awareness, not decrease awareness. If you fall asleep while you meditate and you not meditate. 
If you fall asleep while you're meditating, you're not meditating. Got to make yourself a little bit, you're comfortable, but you got to be comfortably uncomfortable, right? So I recommend you sit on the edge of a chair because on the edge of a chair, you can't fall asleep or you fall off the damn chair. I recommend you sit on the edge of the chair. Close your eyes. Breathe deep. Let all the addictions go. Let all the stresses go. Pour your libation to the ancestors. I don't meditate until after I pray. Always pray to God first. God is everything. So you pray to God first. You got to do your prayer first. No meditation without prayer. Prayer first. Establish God contact. Establish God contact. First of all, let me say this. Black people don't pray enough. We don't pray enough because we're so European. We don't pray enough. That's a big problem we got. There are energies that take our prayers to heaven. There are spirits whose job is to take our prayers to heaven. Most black people don't pray. All we do is stress and complain. No prayer. And when you do pray, a lot of us have no faith in our prayers. I got to do better with prayer. I only pray once a day. I got to do better with that. I'm going to try to get up to three times. But after you pray, you got to meditate. When you pray, you're talking to the universe. When you meditate, the universe responds to your requests. When you pray, you make a request on the universe. When you meditate, you get quiet and you let the universe talk to you. Sometimes you get into a deep, a deep meditation. You can feel the ancestors. Pray, libation, meditation. Prayer, libation, meditation. Prayer, my prayer, libation, meditation. I got to invoke the ancestors before I meditate because they might want to talk to me. So I got to make sure the ancestors, is, I got to raise the spirits. Early morning, late night prayers are the best. Early, if you can wake up late, you know, three, four in the morning, that's when the ancestors are walking the earth. The great mothers are walking the earth. Best time to meditate because everybody in bed. 